Cylinders are a part of the GRE and GMAT that I see plenty of students revising, but few students remembering when it comes to the test. I'm going to try and give you a way to easily remember both of the things you need to know about cylinders. As you can tell, I've changed the background from my other videos, so let me know in the comments if you like this new style. A classic question will be, what is the volume of a cylinder that has a radius of 5 centimeters and a height of 10 centimeters? The questions will get harder, by the way, for questions two and three, which is the beast mode question. Now, I could just give you the formula for the volume of a cylinder, and I will, but I want to explain where it comes from. Essentially, the way we get the volume of a cylinder is by having a circle run through the entire cylinder. Let me replay that. So imagine the circle starting at the base of the cylinder and running its way through and up to the top of the cylinder. That's why the formula is pi r squared for the area of a circle multiplied by the height. It's that area of a circle extended up through the shape. The radius of the circle is, of course, the line from the center of the circle to the circumference. And so we're merging that formula for the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, with the height. We're just multiplying that area by the height. That's where the formula comes from. And that's how I want you to remember it. Pi r squared multiplied by height. Hopefully it's not just memorization anymore, you know where it comes from. Can you now pause the video and try to work out the volume of this cylinder? Essentially, we're just inserting the radius and the height into that formula. So we're going to square 5. Notice we don't square the pi, it's only the radius being squared. I see a lot of students multiplying by pi and then squaring. You can let me know in the comments if that was you, but you probably won't because you're embarrassed. But either way, 5 squared and then we multiply by the height. So 5 squared is 25 times 10, that's 250 times pi. So we just write the answer as 250 pi. Too many students are in a big rush to calculate the decimal. Unless the question specifies it, we can leave it in terms of pi. For the other two questions, I'll give you a multiple choice so you can see for yourself. Either way, that's where the volume of a cylinder formula comes from. I forgot to mention, by the way, but for the beast mode question at the end, I'm going to try the new Bing chat and see if it can answer and compare your answer to its answer and explanation. It's quite an interesting result. Anyway, time to move on to the curved surface area of a cylinder. But again, I want you to understand where it comes from. To get the curved surface area, imagine the circumference of a circle and imagine it running its way down the length or up the height, same thing, of a cylinder. That's where the formula comes from. We get the circumference of a circle and run it through the shape. That's why the formula is 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a circle, multiplied by the height. Just like the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared, the area multiplied by the height, the curved surface area is the circumference multiplied by the height. And that's the best way to remember it. So the circumference of a circle is, of course, 2 pi r. And then we multiply that by the height to get the curved surface area. Now, many of you might be thinking, that doesn't look like the formula in the book. I haven't added that plus 2 pi r squared. And there's a reason I didn't do that. The reason the book often adds plus 2 pi r squared is that usually the question is covering a closed cylinder with a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom, or in this case, a circle on the left and the right. But in some circumstances, it might be a hollow tube where there aren't any circles on the top or the bottom. Or maybe it's an open topped cylinder, as we might see in the next question, where we have a circle at the bottom in terms of area, but not at the top. So what I want you to remember is the core formula for the curved surface area, 2 pi r multiplied by height. And then depending on the question, you either add 1 pi r squared if it's just got a base, 2 pi r squared if it's a closed cylinder with a base and a lid on top, or 0 pi r squared if it's a hollow tube with neither a base nor a lid. So it's a bit harder, you have to use a bit of common sense. Anyway, let's deal with this interesting individual, Angel, who wishes to completely cover a gift in wrapping paper with no paper remaining. What is the minimum area of wrapping paper she needs in square inches 
if the gift is in the shape of a closed cylinder, that phrase is really important, closed cylinder, with a diameter of six inches and a length of 12 inches. Pause the video, have a go yourself. Hopefully you started by finding the curved surface area. That's two pi r h. And did you notice I gave you a diameter instead of a radius? So we have to halve that to get the radius. Half of six is three, putting that into the formula and we work out that the curved surface area is 72 pi. Notice again, I didn't actually calculate that as a decimal. I know that pi is 3.14. I just left it as 72 pi. Now for the decision of how many circles to add on. It's a closed cylinder, meaning it's gonna have a base and a top. So I add on two pi r squareds. This comes out as 18 pi. You don't square the pi, just the three. And we add these together to get the total surface area. 72 pi plus 18 pi is 90 pi, which is answer C. But it's time for the beast mode question. I want you to try it yourself. And then we're gonna compare your answer and explanation to Bing Chat's answer and explanation. Of course, I'll give my own explanation too. This is a particularly hard one. I would say 160 for the GRE and 700 for the GMAT. An oil drum in the shape of a cylinder is filled with oil to a height of 10 foot, which is one third its total height. If the volume of oil in the drum is 160 pi cubic feet, what is the total surface area of the oil drum excluding the circular lid on top? So we're combining volume with surface area. And this time we don't want that lid on top. You know how normally in previous questions, I've given you the ingredients to calculate the volume and you've worked it out. This time I only gave you one ingredient, the height of 10 foot, and I told you the volume was 160 pi. You have to put the jigsaw pieces together. In other words, we know that volume of oil in the tank, the gray that you can see on screen, which is 160 pi, is equal to the formula, which remember is pi r squared times the height of 10. We can now simplify this and work out the radius. You might think, but why are we working out the radius? Well, first of all, it's really interesting to know. And second of all, we can presume that's gonna be useful for working out the total surface area. Anyway, cancel out the pi, divide by 10, 16 equals r squared, so r equals four. I know technically r could be negative four, but we're dealing with a real life situation, so you can't have a negative radius. In fact, you can never have a negative radius. Anyway, now we're gonna use the curved surface area formula. But first, we notice that it said it was filled to a height of 10, which is a third its total height. So the actual height of the oil drum is 30, 10 times three. Now we're gonna use our curved surface area formula and put in the radius that we just worked out. And notice I've added a single pi r squared. Why? Because this time we just have a base. We are excluding, we are not including the circular lid on top. That's why I didn't want you to memorize the formula. Every question might be different. Anyway, calculating this, you get 240 pi plus 16 pi, which is 256 pi. Answer C again. I definitely could have ended the video here, but I couldn't resist because I have another new AI focus channel on YouTube called AI Explained, I just wanted to show you the current state of the art in AI. I gave this question to Bing Chat and here's what happened. On the left, you can see its answer and it does indeed get it right. Before you get too overwhelmed with how intelligent it is and it is incredible that it can get this right, I did then follow up with a question. For example, a student might ask me, why is it not D? 272 pi. And the real reason why it's not D, by the way, is because we're excluding the lid and people pick D if they forget that and include two pi r squared. But it gives this weird explanation that the reason we're doing that, the reason it's not 272, is because the oil only fills a third of the drum. Then it gives a formula right at the bottom. If you look, 240 pi plus 16 pi in brackets, take away 160 pi and says equals 256, which it doesn't. So the explanation is completely faulty despite it getting the actual question right. And by the way, it didn't just Google this or Bing this because I created the question today. It's a brand new question and it did get it right, but its explanation is whack.
Either way, hope you found this interesting and do check out AI Explained if this kind of stuff interests you. But my main goal was to teach you about cylinders and I hope I achieved it. Have a wonderful day.